is a CBS News special report. I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington. A major new escalation in the Middle East. Tonight, Iran launched an unprecedented attack on Israel. It involves dozens of drones launched from Iranian territory. A first. This is in retaliation for Israel's bombing of Iran's consulate in Syria earlier this month, which killed a number of senior leaders of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Earlier today, Israel shut down all school activities in anticipation of an attack. The United States has been helping Israel tonight, shooting down some drones. There is significant concern that this could widen the ongoing Israel-Gaza war to more of the Middle East. President Biden returned to the White House earlier from Delaware. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayyab is in Tel Aviv. MTS, tell us what you are seeing and what you are hearing on the ground. We do an extremely worrying night here in Israel, where in the last hour alone, we've heard the sound of sirens and loud booms, including in areas right across the country, which has just rattled so many people after dozens of drones and potentially missiles entered Israeli airspace. Uh, airspace, rather. In fact, I believe we have some footage of that. Again, you can hear the sound of sirens blaring, and you can see some of those interceptions. Now, we understand the U.S., Israel, and the Jordanian military uh, intercepted much of that, and so, too, has Israel's incredibly sophisticated missile defense systems. We also understand that Israel's war cabinet is meeting in Tel Aviv here at this very hour, and we're also hearing reports that there is at least one casualty. Again, reports that there is at least one casualty. The concern is that could change in the coming hours following this unprecedented attack from Iran on Israel, inside Israeli territory, something Iran has never done, but warned it would, as you so rightly said, following last week's strike on its embassy in Damascus, destroying that building and killing that senior commando. Now, very quickly, the U.S. embassy here in Jerusalem has told all U.S. government employees to shelter in place until further notice, and according to a security alert, rather, that as these drones and missiles continue to be launched at Israel, that there's a lot of concern here for the safety of people. Uh, and again, finally, we've heard from Iran's foreign ministry, which said that they were responsible for tonight's attack. Weijia. MTS, thank you. I want to bring in Face the Nation moderator and chief foreign affairs correspondent Margaret Brennan. Margaret, the U.S. has said for days now that this attack was imminent. And we know today that the U.S. shot down one Iranian drone at least. Can you talk about how much the U.S. played in deterring this attack? U.S. deterrence has been a factor here, and this attack was so well telegraphed by Iran. They said they would do something. They took a week to do it since that initial April first attack on Iranian generals in Syria. They viewed that as an attack on their sovereign territory, said they would respond, sending slow-moving drones saying you're going to do something. All of that indicates, as they have said both publicly and privately, that they are not looking for conflict with the United States and are trying to calibrate a response. And there's been a flurry of diplomatic activity with U.S. passing written messages to Iran through intermediaries, having others call and urge Tehran not to escalate this further. So we know there are U.S. aircraft, as you, as you mentioned, there are U.S. vessels in the region to try to also underscore that the United States stands by militarily its ally Israel here. But the U.S. is also advising Israel on what their response to this will be. And tonight we are continuing to hear from Iran through a tweet it sent through its United Nations mission. I want to share this with our viewers. They say that this matter can be deemed concluded. However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime, from which the U.S. must stay away, in all caps. Margaret, they claim it's over. They also have a warning for the U.S. What do you make of this? 
It, it's fascinating to claim it's over before a single drone had even made it into Israeli airspace. The timing there was notable, and it indicates that they are not looking to further escalate from this, that they are responding and they don't want to draw the U.S. in. The U.S. has directly warned Israel, Iran not to attack U.S. personnel and facilities in the region, but we do know that U.S. embassies throughout the region are on high alert, that in Israel, in Lebanon, Americans have been told not to travel to certain areas, to stay in well-defended spaces. So so this is really going to be, in many ways, uh, a wait and see. Will there be casualties? How much of an impact is there on the ground? That will then determine the Israeli response. The United States is really trying to keep Israel from the escalation risk that could happen here, really trying to keep them from making this into a wider regional war. And, of course, that is exactly what the president has been talking about all day with his national security advisors at the White House. That is where we find CBS News correspondent Natalie Brand. Natalie, the president convened his entire sec national security team. He came back early from Delaware. What are they doing tonight? We're talking the top administration officials from the Defense Secretary, Secretary of State, CIA Director, National Security Advisor met in the Situation Room with the President as this began unfolding. He tweeted uh, this message a short time ago and really re-emphasizing that message that U.S. commitment to Israel's security against threats from Iran and its proxy is ironclad. As you know, Ouija, as he told you yesterday, that is a message that has been clear uh, from the White House ahead of this attack. It's also being echoed by congressional leaders who are starting to put out statements and post on social media, including Senate Foreign Relations Chair Ben Cardin, who is also cautioning Iran against widening this or escalating further. Natalie Brand at the White House, thank you. Our continuing coverage streaming on CBS News 24-7 and at cbsnews.com. We hope you join us. I'm Weijia Jiang in Washington.